Let's look at capillary dynamics today. So what we have in the middle of the screen is a capillary and we have the uh, venous end of the capillary, that is the end of the capillary that's connected to the to the vein, to the drainage of the capillary network here, and we have the part of the capillary that's connected to the uh, arterial side of the capillary network here. And we're going to be looking at the pressures that operate in the capillary. So the first pressure that we need to consider is the pressure that's generated by the force of contraction of the left ventricle, the blood pressure, uh, the hydrostatic pressure on the arterial side, and that's going to be pushing fluid out of the capillary uh, into the tissue space, and that would be the hydrostatic pressure due to the arterial side of the capillary network. And then over here, let's look at the pressure on the venous end. So let's draw that arrow. Now that arrow is going to be a little smaller because by the time the blood pressure gets to this side, the hydrostatic pressure on the venous end, it's going to be lower because a lot of the energy uh, has been used up in driving the fluid through the capillary network. So those are the two pressures that are coming from the force of contraction of the left ventricle, or, or really the blood pressure. And now let's consider another pressure, and that pressure is the colloid osmotic pressure. And the colloid osmotic pressure is the pressure that's due to the presence of uh, albumin in the capillary albumin's in the capillary and there isn't really any albumin out here in the tissue space and this is an osmotic pressure and that means that the uh, albumin molecules are drawing fluid into the capillary so let's draw the colloid osmotic pressure and that pressure is essentially the same throughout the capillary. It's the same on the arterial side as it is on the venous side. Now if you look what's happening with these pressures, here the hydrostatic pressure, the blood pressure, is bigger than the colloid osmotic pressure. So if you sum those two pressures up, one is pulling uh, in, the colloid osmotic pressure is pulling in, and the hydrostatic pressure is pushing out, but the force pushing out is greater, so what's happening here is that you have a net outward pressure. So this is the sum of the hydrostatic pressure, the blood pressure, and the colloid osmotic pressure, and that's pushing fluid out. On this side, though, the colloid osmotic pressure is uh, actually greater than the uh, than the hydrostatic pressure. So the colloid osmotic pressure is greater and so on this side you get a net flow adding these two pressures, the colloid osmotic pressure here and the hydrostatic pressure, the blood pressure here, you get a net flow uh, inward. And here you have a net flow is out. And if you stop and think ab about what that means, what's actually uh, going on here in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the tissue space is that surrounding the capillary, of course, what do you have? Well, you, you have cells. And now these cells are getting nutrition and building blocks for whatever they're doing. Say this is the thyroid gland. Well, okay, if it's the thyroid gland, that means that they're getting iodine from the capillary here, and they're making a thyroid hormone, T3, T4, here, and that thyroid hormone is going right back into the capillary network here. Or it may be any one of a number of different uh, organs or tissues, the point being that this flow of fluid from the arterial side of the capillary uh, washes over the cells and 
delivers nutrition and building blocks to the cells and then whatever it is that the cells are making goes right back into the bloodstream here on the venous side of the capillary net so that would include of course the waste products and um, this is what happens with normal capillary fluid dynamics so uh, the next lecture we're going to talk uh, very briefly about some of the disturbances that can occur in the uh, in the pressures and the effects those disturbances would have on the body.